Vimal, thank you for uh, the time that you've given to have this conversation about independence and work. Uh, since we've been consulting with a lot of family run businesses, I find that this is a huge challenge that many of them are struggling with. They're growing business. They are at the most giving, not they're also perhaps they're not giving independence even to the next generation. So if you were to send the bullet points about to entrepreneurs like you, family run businesses, growing fast, expanding fast, and if they really want to bring about this culture, you have used this word culture many a times in the conversation today, where people enjoy uh, independence at work. What are those three to five things or advice, pieces of advice that you get? I'm glad that you asked this question because a lot of family-owned businesses are transitioning today right. and uh, it is very important uh, that they study the success stories and the failure stories. Uh, there's so much to learn from both of them. So first thing I would like to say is the decision-making process. See, in a traditional family business, uh, a lot of things are centralized and the decision-making is, is very centralized. So in today's environment, if you see the successful family businesses, I would take the example of the Aditya Bilda Group. They have really decentralized the decision making. They hired different divisional heads for each of the their industry, and they've given them independence, whatever I understand, and they've given them authority. They've given them uh, scope to fail, to to, to 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 fall down and get up, right? So those things are very important for any decision making. So. The organizational structure needs to be developed according to the business as you transition. The second thing is long-term vision. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of family businesses they look at uh, you know the today. cash flows today, <laughs> and, 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 and and you know they're not able to look at long term, right? That lot of investment that you make today makes sense after two years, five years today in the, in the technology, right? So. In the beginning, when I invested, when I started investing in the company, uh, you know, it was a big risk. Like the kind of, uh, you know, we, we invested, uh, I remember in 2007 or 8, uh, seven times of our annual revenue, we invested a capital investment. So, so that was, that was a big risk, you know, but then I had a conviction that, uh, you know, this investment will pay because we are, I had done my homework through diligence. So the second uh, suggestion I would have is that create that investment. You know, look at long term, not the immediate term. Don't look at the cash flows. If your business model is good, then automatically things will fall in place. The third point I would say is the closeness with which the, the business house is monitored, right? They see the performance every day. Uh, there used to be a word called partha, you know, whether, uh, you know, so the, so the regular cash flows will go to the head of the family and they will monitor that very closely. So the will be a very good Rubin Rubin will play a very important <laughs> role. Kill that, right? So I think that when you have professional managers, right, and uh, then you should. You should let them function, right? And you can have a annual plans and monthly plans and dashboards, but then don't do it on a daily. Don't breathe on your the neck of your people, right? Let them uh, succeed. I mean, let give them a space uh, to to do their things, right? And uh, fourth thing that is most important thing is share. See the old families, you know, we are not able to share our success with the people in the company. See, when you are able to align the growth of people with the growth of the company, with the growth of the company it will, nobody can stop. Because today I have 3,000 people and if everybody thinks 
that their growth and company's growth are aligned. I don't have to do anything. So the system will learn. Absolutely right. You will need to traverse this journey. And uh, throughout this conversation, one thing which is emerging very strongly is you need the right type of people to create it. And I think this is a catch twenty two situation. Which comes first, the people or the change in the entrepreneur, or it's the change in the entrepreneur first, people next. <laughs> I really don't know because I honestly, when I started, uh, I was a very controlled freak, right? I mean, I, have seen that. I, mean, I would uh, take all decisions, everything, nothing would go, uh, you know, without my knowledge. My knowledge, even. There are days I remember uh, when we started in 2008, 9, 10. Every drawing will first come to my table at the day's end. I will check those drawings, and at night, two o'clock, three o'clock, I would send it to the client. So, so even the drawings could not go to the clients uh, without my checking. You know that was the kind of control I had, and uh, I think I'm glad that over the time uh, I could change. I think uh, meeting the people around the world. I think the global travel and meeting the people around the world. I, it was one of the game changers, right? Uh, because you see and learn from these people. Meeting the successful CEOs of the other companies, you know how they are, uh, how they are managing their company. Of course, the education at IIT, I am of course in. And I think reading some of the great books, you know, the reading. I love to read the autobiographies of the successful uh, CEOs and entrepreneurs. You know, that Sakyamuni or uh, these type of people, right? Who, who, who inspire you? That how they they build that organization, and uh, and I hope that we can continue in this path. And uh, and I and I'm confident that if we can develop the people, and if we can. Align their growth with the company, then sky's the limit. You know, you are so glad that I am having this conversation with you, because I could have spoken to many other people, senior people, but none of them would have been so candid and honest about the journey that you have traversed. Because it is important to acknowledge that I wasn't what I am today, and as you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, what has got you here. We are taking to the next level, and I think that's a great um, game changer that you have done. Uh, well, I don't know how to thank you. I can only say that it is you who decided not to look at how the grill will look in every drawing, and that is why today there are fourteen hundred light projects in Pinnacle, where you don't even know what is happening in any of them, with three thousand people managing it. And there could not be a better example of providing independence at work. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.